in the waters of baptism, Francis Fernandez died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Brothers and sisters, dear family and friends, first of all, uh, you welcome at this service, the funeral service for our friend uh, Francis Fernandez. There is the first bench here, which can be used for those who would like to be, you know, I assent. No, that's okay? All right. So we are going to start really this uh, service with a feeling, mixed really uh, feelings. Yes, Francis Fernandez was a, a very uh, used and very familiar to this church. But because of the sickness, we have missed him for a long time. Though I could see him um, a few days before he passed away. So it's really an homage as uh, a parish to welcome him again in this church and to celebrate his life, in fact. 
And there are many symbols we are going uh, to do and to give to him in a way that we will celebrate really his life in this church, in this parish. The first of them is the book of the gospel. We know that coming in the church, all we believe and we consider really the book of the gospel as the source of our life in faith. That's why I'm going now to put it as a symbol on his coffin and believing in faith that because he was living through the word coming from the book of gospel, so he will continue and to share Christ's victory on death. And the second symbol is the cross. Yes, we are uh, in the octave of Easter, celebrating the victory of Christ and the salvation he won for us all, all of us. And as Christians, we know that through the, the cross, we can reach that salvation. And I think Francis is one of those who can witness that going through the way of the cross, we will reach that victory. And let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Francis Fernandez, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please sit now. We are now going to listen to the readings. Now it's time for the first reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain about those who have died, to make sure you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Son, the Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. 
The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? Response. The Lord is my light and my help. There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. Response. The Lord is my light and my O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Response. The Lord is my light and my heart. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. Response. The Lord is my light. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. As for my life, it's already been pulled away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day, and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing, the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If they were not, I should not have told you. And I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas, one of the twelve, said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to, to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit. Brothers and sisters, dear family and friends, yes, we are gathered in this church, the church of Francis Fernandez, for his family to give him the last homage as a community of faith. And we can't do it without thinking or to read the words which were the source of his life. So I'll start with the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians, what was, um, which was uh, our first reading. 
In that reading, St. Paul wants to assure us about our faith in the resurrection. So, as he wrote, that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God through Jesus Christ, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. And I like very much what was the responsorial psalm, and the, especially the response which is, the Lord is my light and my help. Last time I visited him at home, we couldn't talk because he was very weak. But for sure, he was following all we were talking about. Because at a certain time, I saw saw him moving the head, even if he couldn't say anything. So for me, it's a witness that he knew and he was really assured that whatever will happen, he has believed in the Lord and God will take care of him. And later on, I remember that I have called to ask, how is he doing? So since I visited him, yeah, I knew that something was improving, but it was stable. Anyway, from the time I found him and when I left the house, something has changed. He was aware of all the prayers we were doing. So for me, it's really a witness of faith and hope. And in the gospel, which is very familiar when we are celebrating funerals, from John, the gospel of John, that Jesus is giving again an assurance about what will happen to those who believe in him when the healthy life ends. Yes, all of us, we need a home to go to at the end of the day. So we need a home to go to. But to have a home, it's not just to have a building. It is to have a set of close ties with certain people, people who accept us, who, uh, for what we are, and who give us a feeling of belonging. We had to celebrate for Francis, was it the 60? 60th anniversary of uh, marriage, yeah? And that happened, yeah, I will say maybe a week before, but he couldn't attend the celebration here because he was sick. But the family came and we celebrated it really in faith. So talking about a set of close ties with certain people, so here I'm thinking especially to his family. Maybe I I can give also another witness. His daughter was um, taking communion to him. When she comes to communion, so I was giving her another host for Francis. And not only once, 
So it happens many times. Just to underline that there were people who could take care of him, not only physically, but also spiritually. So this is really to have a home. So if we have a home here in this world, we also need an eternal home to go to when death brings down the curtains on the day of our life. And our faith tells us that there is an eternal home waiting for us at the end of our earthly life. So this is the meaning of the gospel <clears throat> when Jesus says that I'm going to prepare for you a place in the Father's house. So we have a home here with a set of uh, very close ties between us but we do have also an eternal home. And Jesus told us that he's going to prepare a place for, for us. And when Thomas, one of the disciples, will ask him, we don't know even where you are going, so how can we know the way? He says, I don't go very far, don't worry, because the one who will see me we will also see the Father. In other words, the one who believes in me, he will get there. Really, faith is the most important thing in life. And without it, we would be deprived of the hope of an everlasting home. The same Christ who is risen and we are still in the octave of uh, Easter, revealed to us the true nature of our everlasting home, our promised land, and therefore the true goal of our earthly journey is there. So we should not be thinking about when we, talk, we are talking about the Father's house to, to try to look for uh, the address or the postcode of it. It's not about a physical uh, place. It is just a special relationship with our Heavenly Father because our final destination is there, the Father's house. As he said himself, I go to prepare a place for you there. In that sense, we can consider this life here, as Christians, really like an exile. In spite of all the buildings we put up and the roots we put down, we do not have here a lasting home. All we have, as St. Paul says, is a kind of a tent. And at death, the tent is folded up and we depart for the, that permanent home Jesus Christ has promised us. So the spiritual journey, in fact, begins the day of our baptism. That is the day our life was linked with the life of Christ himself. And in that day, we discover that we are all children of God, all called to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Because during the baptism, we have been asked, do you reject Satan? And do you believe in God the Father, and God the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church? Because we accepted that and we believed in that, we have made our commitment to that God. Really, we are um, to inherit the kingdom of God the Father, and Jesus came in the world to establish that kingdom, kingdom of peace, kingdom of hope, kingdom of justice. Because all we are only pilgrims on our journey through life, 
knowing that our final desti destination will be the Father's house, we keep our sight always fixed, not just on the appearance of this life, but on the fact that we were all created by God, our Father, that we cannot be truly happy unless we live as God wishes us to live. And of course, God wants only what is good for us. Even if most of the time we should go through the way of cross, some trials. But we should keep our eyes fixed on the fact that our destiny is eternal life and not just death. So I invite you, as you are here, and as you have done it since he passed away, to pray for Francis Fernandez, for his eternal rest, and for the family, for the comfort from God himself. And now, we can pass through the bidding prayers. Please uh, come in here. Francis has finally reached the shore of eternity. Now that all his earthly tasks are completed, may he enjoy rest for all his labors. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For all who knew and loved Francis, that they may draw inspiration from his life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. That Christ, to whom Francis was united in baptism, may welcome him into heaven and give him a share in his glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. For the family, relatives, and friends of Francis, that they may find comfort in the faith in God and strength through the support of the community. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For all those who have left this world in God's friendship, especially those who were dear to us, Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We offer our prayers to the intercession of Our Lady as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are among women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, came that we might have life and have it to the full. Help us to know him and to follow him in his life so that when we die, we may dwell in your house forever and ever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we start the second part of our Eucharist, which is the presentation of the bread and the wine, which will be our spiritual food.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you this sacrificial offering, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Francis, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of a blessed resurrection has done that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that like the default, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that we avail us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into and by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Francis, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that you was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the, the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced with eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him 
and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, a phone by the divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously granted peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, where the sins of the world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are called as called those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not crazy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be hid. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. To keep the social distancing, I will start this side for communion. When this side is finished, then I will pass to the another one to avoid that we come across one another.
O Lord, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Francis may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please sit. A tribute to our dead. Everybody paying their respects to dead today, whether in person or in their homes via the live streaming, already know that what a kind, compassionate, considerate, gentle and thoughtful man dad was, and that he was absolutely devoted to his family. What you might not know is that dad considered everyone his family. Even the strangers he met, he was drawn to and cared about and treated them as his family. He had a kind word, a smile, a joke, and an empathy which enabled him to reach out to people. Most of you also know that Dad was a man with a large female entourage, a wife and six daughters. Many felt sorry for him. Many believed he was a saint to put up with all his women. And many envied him. Indeed, even mum would say, Dad is such a lucky man. He has all six of you adoring him. He is treated even better than Prince Philip. Dad would frequently joke, I am the only rose amongst all these thorns. When our youngest sister, Yvonne Zelia, was born, we were cu curious about how our parents chose her name, Yvonne Zelia. Dad explained. Think about it, he said. Yvonne Zelia. Y Z. The alphabet has ended. It worked. Yvonne remained our youngest sister. Whilst Dad might not have had sons to drink pints with him, we girls tried to step up to the plate as best we could. Dad liked sports, and so did we, and we spent time with him watching sports and cheering his favourite teams. I understand that there are a few ex-Mombasa hockey youngsters paying their respects to Dad via the live streaming. Dad absolutely loved his hockey and delighted in watching the young girls play every weekend in Mombasa. Dad's bond with them was so strong that we girls were convinced that many of these players were Dad's surrogate sons. Dad inherited four wonderful sons-in-law and a grandson. If he was disappointed that not one of them liked hockey, he never showed it. After arriving in the UK, Dad had no ready access to hockey games, so he relished watching football. Manchester United was his favourite team, and if memory serves me right, it was also his grandson Sean's team. Even as late as four years ago, Dad would go for a jog, or as he would call it, a sprint. It makes us girls feel good to have unwittingly followed in this tradition. Four of Dad's daughters out of his six love running. Yes, we know our joints are going to be shot to pieces, but hey, Dad sprinted and lived a good life for 96 years, so here's hoping. Dad was passionate about Goa. He would talk to us endlessly about Goa. Many times we were convinced that he embellished his stories on an ongoing basis. When Dad first started telling us about how wonderful the Goan prawns were, they were the size of his outstretched palm. As the years went by, these prawns miraculously increased in size. Mm. Here's my dad. I give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't believe 
that he would lie to us. Maybe he was referring to the large gold lobsters. Dad and Mum took five of us girls to Goa for nearly six months in 1974. Yvonne was not born yet. They did, 47 years ago, what very switched on and enlightened parents might do today. Exit the red race for a while to appreciate a broader expanse of life. Our parents wanted to show us their homeland. Our journey from Mombasa was made on the Karanja, a ship of what they call cruise line now. And it was seven of us, mum, dad, and five of us girls. My eldest sister, Prue, was only 11 then. Thinking about it now, it must have been a nightmare for our parents to have a watchful eye on all six young girls and to ensure that we were always well behaved. I remember a formal dinner on the Karanja when we were invited to eat at the captain's table. Dad told us, be on your best behavior. And then I embarrassed everyone. I put a baby cabbage into my mouth and decided the taste was beyond disgusting. So I spat it out on the pristine white tablecloth. Dad was absolutely horrified. But quick as a whippet, he reached over the, with his napkin and wrapped it up, carrying, it, carrying on talking to the captain as if nothing had happened. It was once I came to the UK that I realized these baby cabbages are the sprouts I absolutely love. I also remember that the Karanja docked at, the, at Karachi for a couple of days. Mum and Dad decided to take us to see the city with its exotic markets and shops. Mum was responsible for four older children, and Dad was in charge of the youngest, Claudette. She was only three years then. So whilst we were merrily and excitedly drinking freshly squeezed sugarcane juice, buying trinkets, and admiring the colorful clothes and footwear, Claudette became mesmerized by a doll and stayed on at the shops, playing with it whilst we walked on. And we walked and walked and walked right back to the ship. Once we started walking up the game plan, Mum asked Dad, where's Claudette? And then you can imagine, all hell broke loose. All six of us rushed back, retracing our footsteps. We found Claudette still holding the doll, oblivious to the fact that she was minus her family, but perfectly content to be carried by the shop owner who was waiting outside on the roadside for our return. He gave Claudette the doll for free, by the way. For the rest of the holiday, Claudette was kept on a leash and mum uh, removed responsibility for her. Whilst we were on our uh, time, short time in Goa, our parents hired tutors who would teach us regularly. We had a great time as a family. We swam in the beaches, cared for a pet piglet, which was a gift from a grateful patient. We drank tea with loads of sugar and no milk, due to a milk shortage, I think. Unfortunately, none of my dad's pro bono patients thought to give him a gift of a cow for the milk. That taught us to climb the hills in Vena, Mum's village. They were beautiful hills, just outside Mum's family home, across the road. I remember being amazed at being able to pick cashews from the tree. The ripe ones were this beautiful orange-yellow color, and so juicy. Dad showed us how to eat them carefully so they didn't sting our mouth, and how to bury the, the nut and retrieve it a few weeks later to eat. There were this lovely, crisp nut. Dad also took us to this beautiful waterfall where we were able to stand underneath it in our swimsuits. I've not come across anything so beautiful as it, and never found it, even on my later visits back to Goa with Mum. This place obviously was Dad's secret. Maybe someday, when I revisit Goa, Dad will guide me to it.
Mom and Dad worked hard for us to give us a good life. We had good food and excellent education. We were taught high morals and good manners. Between, between them, they ferried all six of us to various schools, extra tuition lessons, to piano lessons, and to sports commitments. That mum and dad managed to raise six daughters to become assertive, strong-willed, and ambitious, and successful women is, a, is truly a tribute to them, and we are forever grateful to them. Whilst mum did her bit, Dad multitasked working at customs with studying and practicing to become a bone setter and physiotherapist. As most people joke, a man and multitasking are parallel lines. It was no wonder that one day Dad completely forgot to pick me from Secret Heart Nursery School. I was five years old. This was a couple of years before he lost Claudette in Karachi. I remember waiting and waiting, but Dad never came. It's a real salute to our parents that they taught us to think for ourselves and survive from a young age. I remember running up to a stranger and explaining to him I was too small, that my dad had not picked me up, and that I knew the way home, but I was too small and too young to cross the road or walk through the park on my own. I said, if you hold my hand, I will take you to my home and show you the way. 20 minutes later, we reached home for my mum and dad. My sister informed me last night that the stranger ended up marrying our neighbour in Mombasa. They are probably both watching on the live stream. Thank you, Mario. The days Dad did remember to do the school run must have been very trying for both our parents. Just imagine getting six girls re ready dressed, breakfast, school books and PE kits packed and then all at the same time and then bundled into the car. Dad must have been tearing his hair out. Perhaps that's why he lost his hair and became bald early. We were never ready or one of us would have forgotten something and he would have to turn around, or worse still, one of us would not have drunk our mandatory cup of milk, which meant that Daddy would not drive the car. He would sit and wait patiently, even though that made him late for work at the customs. Eventually, one of my sisters would diplomatically drink the milk, even though it was not hers to drink. So, just to get all of us into the car and moving. Dad was born in Goa, the eldest of six children. He left school at 16, intending to join the seminary to become a Catholic priest. As soon as he enrolled, he went home to tell his mum. Sadly, Grandma pointed out to him that the family could not afford for him to spend six years studying to become a priest. Dad withdrew his application and found a job. In his spare time, he volunteered to help his uncle, who was a physiotherapist and bone setter. Instead of resenting the cards dealt out to him, Dad focused on becoming on a different vocation, and one that ultimately enabled him to leave his footprint in the world. He often wondered what kind of priest he would have made. We think a unique priest, but had Dad become a priest, none of us would be here today paying our respects to him. In 1961, Dad and Mom married in Goa and headed for Mombasa to start a new life. Dad was offered a job at customs as an immigration officer. Whilst working at customs, Dad continued his physiotherapy and bone setting studies, this time formally. Later, he left customs and started his own practice. Soon, strangers from all over Africa, India, and even Europe would visit Dad, whose mission was save one, save all, regardless of background.
that blazed the trail for diversity and inclusion long before it became a hot topic. He was not interested in money, which led to mum being inundated with live pigs, chicken, fish, and all other odd gifts from grateful patients. Every evening, Dad's patients in our sitting room would be entertained by a menagerie of pets tripsing past them into the kitchen to roost. Dad worked hard to send all six of his daughters to university in the UK. He would say, with education and privilege comes obligation and responsibility. That encouraged us to strive to reach our full potential and always help others. Today, on behalf of mom and dad, I would like to publicly thank Dad's brother, Anthony and his wonderful wife, Anne. Anthony and Anne opened their house, their home to us, whilst mum and dad stayed in Mombasa. Anne and Anthony treated us better than they did their own kids. Oscar, Kevin, and Odette. Our three cousins were absolutely amazing too. Their parents made them sleep downstairs whilst we were given the beds and the bedrooms upstairs. Not once did we ever hear them complain or resent us. So today, Anthony, Anne, Oscar and Kevin and Odette, thank you on behalf of our dad and mum. Our parents are proud of us today and you contributed hugely to us turning out the way we are. In 1990, when Dad was 65, he and Mum joined us in the UK. Dad continued treating people, amusing them by singing traditional Goan songs, mandos they called, and playing his harmonica as he did. Today, we are honoured that Owen Perez, thank you, has offered to play his harmonica in homage to Dad. In 2011, Dad was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. In 2017, he suffered a severe stroke, but recovered. Last December, Dad contracted COVID-19, but how typical of Dad to hang on for Christmas, not wanting to miss out on Mum's delicious sopital and sanas. Dad's COVID attack was so serious that the doctors warned us that he would leave us by the 20th of December. However, Dad had his own ideas. He wanted to stay to celebrate a host of important family milestones. His 60th wedding anniversary, his 96th birthday, both in February, and his ringlet-haired daughter Claudette's 50th birthday on 15th of March. Dad also wanted to see his granddaughter, Sasha Rose, turn 16 on the, the next day, 16th of, sorry, turn 21 the next day on the 16th of March. I made her younger. So he stayed for 30 minutes into Sasha's birthday and then quietly and peacefully, he decided to take his leave. On 16th of March, we will forever remember this extra special day for our family. We will celebrate a granddad and a granddaughter every year. True to form, Dad also made sure that his farewell will take place in Easter week, wanting to enjoy the beautiful Easter flowers around in his church, St. Joseph's in Harrow. Mum and Dad loved flowers. Our home in Mombasa was called Jumbaya Mawa, translated House of Flowers. Our parents replicated Jumbaya Mawa when they bought 38 Whitefriars Drive, their Harrow home. Until, up until lately, Dad was a worthy contributor to St. Joseph's. He would visit regularly and he would volunteer to clean the church. 
Now, as we bid Dad farewell, we are happy to share these memories with you. Everyone thinks their dad is special. We are no different. Our dad was one in a billion. Dad, you were the wind beneath our wings. You, you were the comfort blanket around us, the umbrella above our heads. The safety net will know us. We miss you so much already. We have your legacy. We will keep it and pass it on to later generations. We will look after each other, Dad, and Mum. We are fine now, Dad. So fly free, and may God hold you in the palm of his hands until we meet again. We love you, Dad. Mum says thank you for being you, and thank you for 60 years that you can look back on with pride and fulfillment. Thank you. Hi, I'm the 21-year-old. Um, um, I never quite got rid of my rosy cheeks, so I'll forgive the mistake. <laughs> um, thank you to Hush for sharing those memories, and a huge thank you from all of us here for taking such good care of Papa. Um, you are a star. Um, it will come as no surprise to you all that being his grandchild was a wonderful and interesting experience. From debating whether it was condensation or God who put the clouds in the sky, to trying to follow exercises that we didn't really understand in the first place, we all have some fairly unique memories of our granddad. Ailish, Sean and I all put our heads together to write something that expressed what Papa was truly like. And so here is our poem titled, Who Put the Clouds in the Sky? As you asked me, but who put the clouds in the sky? I found myself without a reply, for you were always less sure of the how, but not of the why. Whilst lying on the floor, I tried to catch my mother's eye as you not so gently rubbed the pain from my thigh. And you asked, but who put the clouds in the sky? I may not have taken your advice, I may have sighed, because your argument for warm milk, not cold, never felt quite justified. For you were always less sure of the how, but not of the why. I would look around trying to see who pinched me on the sly, and see your arm retreat and slip to the side, as you asked me, but who put the clouds in the sky? You could repaint the Bible with colours so vibrant it seemed alive. And your version stuck with us, though our teachers did try. For you were always less sure of the how, but not of the why. I know you would not want me to cry, so I'll remember our walks for ice cream when the sun was high. As you asked me, but who put the clouds in the sky? For you were always less sure of the how, but not of the why. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we pass at the final commendation. <clears throat> Trusting in God, we have celebrated the life of Francis Fernandez. We have prayed together for him. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we, should, we shall see Francis again and enjoy his friendship. So the faith he had is giving us some insurance. Let us pray.
To you, O Lord, we command the soul of Francis, your servant. In sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. And forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness. And your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now take our friend Francis to his place of rest. <laughs> 